Hello, Spencer County. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Chuck Abel and I'm the Acting Superintendent of Spencer County Schools. And with me today I have... I'm Cindy Hayes. I'm the District Health Coordinator as well as the school nurse at Spencer County Elementary School. Yeah, we wanted to come to you today and talk to you about a couple topics that seem to be really relative in our community right now. The first being some of the unusual circumstances uh, that have kind of somewhat led to the start of the school year and how we're going to handle those uh, in the next few weeks. And then also we know um, our numbers of quarantine students uh, have been significantly large the last few days and, and we want to talk to you a little bit about that and, and why that might be the case. Okay. But first of all, I want you to know and I want the entire community to know that this year, we are committed and dedicated to doing all that we can to make sure that your students stay in school. Okay, but to do that, scenarios may look a little different than they have in years past, and I want you to be prepared for those situations if they were to occur. For example, we could quarantine or NTI one particular school if necessary, while the other three schools may continue to operate. We may have a situation if there's a, a large number of COVID positive students where we NTI two schools and our elementary schools continue to operate. So as far as staying open and schools being out or in, nothing is, is off the table this year. And I think it's important that you know that up front so you could be prepared for those options if that is to happen. Also, obviously COVID has impacted, you know, certain populations of our staff in, in more ways than others. So there could be situations throughout the course of the year where, you know, we're short on bus drivers. But rather than shut down schools as a result, we may rotate driving routes or we may have to ask that you bring your kids to school on particular days. Again, doing all these things with the emphasis of being able to stay in school to provide your kids a quality education. Now, the second thing we want to touch on today is the numbers of quarantine scenarios that have taken place throughout the course of the district and kind of explain to you, you know, why that is the case. We as a district are required to do contact tracing uh, based upon the requirements of the health department and, and state guidelines. So that's not something that we can uh, get away from. The way contact tracing takes place in our schools is that we have to utilize a three foot diameter around a positive student while wearing masks. So at our elementary levels, the amount of quarantines based upon close proximity may not be as large due to the fact that those kids really don't rotate or interact much throughout the course of the day. They typically stay in the same classrooms. Now at our middle school and high school, that's quite different. In a normal school day, a child may go through seven different class periods. So if we were to have a positive student, what we would do is we would look at each class period. We would do a three foot diameter around that particular desk or where that child sits. And anyone that has been in proximity for more than 15 minutes would have to be placed in the contact tracing list and be put on quarantine status. So first period, that could impact three kids, maybe four kids. Depending upon the size of the room and the number of kids in that class, it could impact even more. So then you take that situation and do it again, second period, third period, through seven periods of day. And quickly, those numbers could get relatively high as far as the kids that are, that are impacted. Then you take lunch where students take their masks off and the distancing is increased from three feet to six feet. So if a child is having lunch and is positive with six additional students and they're all in close proximity, those kids could also then be put into that pool as well. Then we have bus routes and bus drives home. And then we have, you know, extracurricular activities for those kids that are in clubs and sports. So the amount of social interaction that takes place within a normal school day within our middle school and high school students is quite high. So you can see that a few minor or, or a few positive cases could really turn into a large number of kids having to be quarantined. And that's kind of what you're seeing now within the district. 
I know that it provides for an extremely frustrating situation for you as a parent to know that your child has to stay home uh, based upon the fact that they may not be showing any symptoms, but that is the requirement uh, that we, we have to follow. All right. So if a child is quarantined, we have various options that they can then take in order to fulfill that recommendation before they're allowed to come back. So Nurse Cindy, could you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. When we have students that we place into quarantine, we uh, do a paperwork that we will send to you via email. And on there, there will be three quarantining options. Uh, the first option is your shortest option, which is a seven day quarantine. Mm -hmm. With that seven day, you have to test negative after the fifth day of exposure, on or after that fifth day. If you test negative on that fifth day, then you do two more days of quarantine and then you're out on the eighth day. That is the only option that requires a COVID test. The other option is a 10 day quarantine. So say you just didn't want to get your child COVID tested, you do your full 10 days and then if you're asymptomatic, you are free to come back to school. Both that one and the seven day, you have to stay asymptomatic. If you have any COVID symptoms, anything, you're supposed to do the full 14 day quarantine. So the paperwork that we put together for you will explain each of those three quarantining scenarios um, very clearly. Okay, thank you, Nurse Cindy. Yes. Now remind me, uh, students that are vaccinated, if they're asymptomatic, do not have to do any of those things, correct? Correct. So if you are totally, uh, fully vaccinated, meaning it's been two weeks um, since the completion of your vaccine series, then you will not, you're not required to quarantine unless you become symptomatic. And then we would want you to stay home, uh, wait a couple of days, get tested. And then if you come back negative, you're, you're free to come back to school. Okay, thank you, Nurse Cindy. Mm -hmm. So we've had some calls from parents asking about why we're inquiring about the vaccination status of, of kids. And that's, that's it. Now, kids aren't required to answer that question when we ask. But if a child has been vaccinated, then they do not have to go through any sort of quarantine scenario if they're asymptomatic. That's the reason that we always ask the question to try to prevent them from having to go through those links. Okay. So as you can see today, based upon our conversation, you know, one positive student within the high school and middle school with the amount of changes that takes place throughout the day, with the amount of social interactions uh, that teenagers typically you know engage in both during school and out of school one positive student could very well easily lead to 20 to 25 students having to be quarantined mm -hmm. is that typically the numbers that you're seeing there Cindy yes indeed and and maybe even upwards of, of more than 25 but if you if you have if we have a day that there are way more than that say up in the 75s to 100 it's probably more right. than one student that's right. tested positive so keep that in mind. Um, it's not it's not always just one student knocking out, you know, half the half of a grade or something. It's it's usually more than one positive. Okay, thank you. And I think that goes back to the point we made originally in this video is the fact that we as a school district, you know, are trying to investigate and get approval through KDE and the various institutions to where, you know, one school doesn't necessarily have to knock the whole district down. If we can if we can put one school on pause for a few days and then continue to run as normal uh, with the rest of the district, that, that's going to be our priority. I mean, again, we are committed to doing everything that we can to make sure your kids have a positive experience. This is going on the third year that we've had educational situations that have been interrupted by COVID. Each year it becomes increasingly more challenging to reduce the gaps that exist. This cannot be another one of those years. So we're dedicated to making sure whatever means possible that, that we're here in each and every day, but not at the expense of the safety of your kids. Okay. So really that's kind of all we have today. Did you have anything else to add in our Cindy's today? I think that's it. I okay. would just encourage everybody, please monitor and, and, and assess your child before you send them to school um, for any signs or symptoms of COVID. Um, nowadays it, that could be anywhere from a, a vomiting and diarrhea all the way up to the things you think about the cough cold fever uh, shortness of air type of situation mm -hmm. so it ev about every cold like symptom can trace back to COVID and I'm not going to I'm going to tell you every time I've talked to someone they say the same thing we thought it was just a little bit of allergies right, or a little right. bit of sinus infection mm -hmm. so when now when you say that your mind needs to go oh could it could could it be COVID okay 
Okay, that's all we have. Again, I want to, in advance, thank you for the support that you've given this school district in the past. We're going to probably be asking for your patience and understanding as we go through the next few weeks. Uh, and again, we're going to do everything we can to try to be as transparent and upfront with you when it pertains to COVID in all situations relative to the, to the school district. You know, our goal is to have the best year possible for each and every one of our kids. And I know we're going to work hard to make sure that happens. Definitely. Okay? Yes. So that's all, that's all we have. Uh, thanks for your time and your uh, patience today and understanding and, and wish every one of you and your children a great school year. And if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out to, to me, Chuck Abel, at the central office. Have a great day.